video just released. The police chief, the mayor, pleading for peace after an officer is now charged with first-degree murder, accused of continuing to shoot a black teenager as he lay dying. Also breaking tonight, the new FBI alert now issued right here at home. Just as millions travel for Thanksgiving, fears now of a copycat terror attack, heightened security at soft targets. Meantime tonight, authorities say another major plot in Paris stopped in its tracks. This stunning image, the Russian fighter jet taking aim at ISIS, shot out of the sky by Turkey. The search for the pilots. The Thanksgiving storm we're tracking, wind, rain, snow, where it hits tomorrow. And the Thanksgiving surprise, the flat screen TV war, as low as $100. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and we have several breaking stories as we come on tonight, and we begin with Chicago on edge tonight. The mayor, the police chief, city leaders all coming before the camera just moments ago, urging calm after a police officer was charged with first degree murder. That Chicago officer is accused of shooting and killing a black teenager and continuing to fire even after the teenager fell to the ground. 16 shots in 15 seconds. The officer entering court today, city leaders saying that officer is going to be held accountable for his actions. As the entire city is just now seeing the video of what happened when that teenager was shot repeatedly. ABC's Alex Perez leading us off from Chicago tonight. Tonight, Chicago police officer Jason Van Dyke turning himself in, charged with first degree murder. It is graphic, it is violent, it is chilling. Tonight, Van Dyke from cop to inmate. To watch a 17 year old young man die in such a violent manner is deeply disturbing. The incident unfolding October 20th, 2014, 9.47 p.m. Police get a call about a suspect armed with a knife who had been breaking into cars. Just 10 minutes later, 9.57, police zero in on that suspect, McDonald, walking down the street. Moments after arriving on the scene, Officer Van Dyke opens fire. The suspect falls to the ground and prosecutors say he keeps firing, emptying his 9mm on McDonald 16 rounds in 15 seconds. Van Dyke's attorney refused to answer um, questions that, but had this to say. This is not a murder case, uh, mm -hmm. despite what you heard in the in the courtroom. Tonight, the Cook County State's attorney under fire for not pressing charges sooner, defending her year-long investigation, saying the thorough review was necessary for the case to hold in court. So many young people of color do not trust law enforcement. They see how long this took to be investigated for charges to come forward. What do you say to that? Clearly, it, it, this officer went overboard, you know, and he abused his authority, um, and I don't believe the force was necessary. Van Dyke becomes the first ever on-duty Chicago police officer to be charged with murder. Jason Van Dyke will be judged in the court of law. That's exactly how it should be. And the McDonald family has already reached a $5 million settlement with the city. They are calling for peace. Van Dyke is being held without bond. Alex Perez, ABC News, Chicago. Alex leading us off tonight. Alex, thank you. And we are also following the new FBI alert tonight for Americans right here at home, just as millions now travel for Thanksgiving. The FBI and Homeland Security very concerned about the potential for a copycat terror attack here in the U.S. after Paris. The warning involves beefing up security at so-called soft targets, trains, airports across the country, and at malls as well. A heavy police presence from New York to Miami to Los Angeles tonight. ABC senior justice correspondent Pierre Thomas with the strongly worded alert this evening, warning attackers could, quote, replicate Paris using similar weapons and tactics. At Washington Union Station today, an unmistakable show of force. Repeating scenes from lower Manhattan this week. FBI and Homeland Security officials today sharing their most urgent concerns in that new bulletin to police across the country that homegrown radicals inspired or directed by Syria-based operatives could seek to replicate the effects of the Paris attacks using similar weapons and tactics, although on a smaller scale. Many of the 18,000 law enforcement agencies now stepping up security, even though no specific plot has been identified. Today, Amtrak's police chief showed us how the national rail system is protecting thousands of Thanksgiving holiday passengers. So, Chief, there's no specific threat, but you've taken some very specific actions. We have, and what you're going to see here today is patrol officers, some deployed with long guns. Over here, we have one of our explosive detection canine, and then up there are uh, special agents who have additional tactical skills. 
Law enforcement sources tell ABC News they've uncovered no intelligence that ISIS sent a cell from Syria to the U.S. like it did in Paris. But the FBI is focused on a pool of ISIS followers here, dozens of potential copycat attackers, each suspect under 24-hour blanket surveillance involving dozens of agents and analysts. And Pierre Thomas with us now live. And Pierre, I know the FBI and the Department of Homeland Security on calls with police chiefs across this country today. And while they are concerned, I want to try to reassure everyone at home tonight because they know of no specific plot. No specific plot. Yes, officials in constant contact across the country. In addition to the dozens of serious cases, there are 900 terror investigations in all 50 states. As one official told me, David, it's all hands on deck. 900 investigations. Pierre Thomas tonight. Thank you, Pierre. There are also fast moving developments from Paris this evening. Word tonight of yet another terror plot there. Stopped before it could be unleashed, and investigators say they were going to target Paris's financial district. Tonight, the eighth attacker still on the run, and there is now an international manhunt at this hour for this man, spotted at a gas station with the alleged eighth attacker. And this evening, ABC News has learned that not only was there another plot for Paris, authorities now telling us there is another sleeper cell of about 10 suspects on the loose right now. ABC's Matt Guppin from Brussels tonight. That Paris attack ringleader, Abdel Hamid Abaoud, not only participated in the attacks, shooting up this restaurant, but also French prosecutors saying tonight he and an accomplice planned a suicide attack on La Défense, Paris's Wall Street. That attack planned for November 18th or 19th, the day after SWAT teams cornered him north of Paris. 5,000 bullets fired in this siege, finally killing him. That explosion, a still unidentified suicide bomber. The complicated web of attackers spinning wider tonight. Belgian authorities setting off an international manhunt for this man, Mohamed Abrini, who they say was seen at this gas station two nights before the attacks, driving one of the getaway cars. And with him, prosecutors say Salah Abdesalam, likely the driver of the attackers who blew themselves up during this soccer match. Are you satisfied right now with the amount of information and intelligence that is shared? No, it's, uh, it was a failure. And tonight, Belgium's foreign minister, Didier Renders, telling ABC News there is another cell of about 10 terrorists still on the loose. It's possible to receive a real terrorist attack and with the capacity to do the same, to have suicide bombings in the, in the streets of Brussels. With that high alert in effect through Monday, this is still a city on partial lockdown. And while schools are scheduled to reopen tomorrow, the foreign minister telling us those terrorist cells are likely targeting commercial centers and malls. David. Matt Gutman in Brussels for us. Thank you, Matt. And as France takes aim at ISIS with airstrikes now, of course, they have been joined by Russia targeting ISIS as well. But tonight, that dramatic and alarming image, a Russian military jet shot down, not by ISIS, but by Turkey, saying Russia was flying over their airspace. A plume of smoke, a Russian warplane shot out of the sky by Turkish fighter jets. Turkey saying they issued 10 warnings in about five minutes time. The two pilots ejecting, at least one now believed dead. Russian President Vladimir Putin calling the move a, quote, stab in the back, now vowing serious consequences. And this evening, the White House is also responding. Could this now lead to something else? ABC's chief global affairs correspondent, Martha Raddatz. The fireball a Russian Su-24 fighter jet streaking across the sky, shot down by an air-to-air -air missile from a Turkish F-16, crashing into the Syrian mountains. The Russian pilots eject, their parachutes deploy. As they fall to earth, they come under heavy gunfire from Syrian rebels. You can see one parachute tangled in the trees. Russia says its warplane was conducting bombing runs targeting ISIS terrorists in Syria. But Turkish officials say the jet crossed its border, flying over this sliver of Turkish airspace less than two miles wide. The Turks insist they warned the Russian pilots to turn back ten times in five minutes before launching a missile. Today, Russia contends its plane never violated Turkish airspace. No, a grim-faced Vladimir Putin uh, calling uh, Turkey's uh, action uh, a stab in the back uh, by the terrorists' accomplices. All day, Russian search and rescue helicopters scour the Syrian countryside, 
one of them coming under fire, a Russian Marine killed. <laughs> Syrian rebels releasing this video of a man they claim is a Russian service member. Russia tonight believes one of the fighter pilots is dead, but the fate of the other still unknown. And Martha is just back from the region tonight. Here we are in the middle of this effort to take out ISIS, Martha. And this was an alarming development that, that Turkey would shoot a Russian jet right out of the sky. Really alarming, David. And you've got this complicated situation there anyway. You've got Russian warplanes up there. You've got American and coalition. This is exactly what the U.S. feared might happen. And what they really want to happen is everybody concentrating on ISIS. And this is not only a terrible event, it's really a distraction. All right, Martha Raddatz with us tonight. Martha, thank you. And as you know, President Obama this evening saying Turkey has the right to defend itself. But this could get complicated. French President Hollande was at the White House today asking for American support. And he will then travel to meet with President Putin next. Today in Washington, Hollande presenting united front with President Obama, who said America stands by its friends in good times and in bad no matter what, saying we've never forgotten how the French people stood with us after 9-11. And today, we stand with you. We turn tonight to the extreme weather now. Nearly 47 million traveling, the vast majority by car this Thanksgiving, and a major winter storm affecting travel tomorrow. Moving east by Thanksgiving and Friday from the Great Lakes to Texas. Snow, ice, heavy rain all included. Outside Portland, Oregon, whiteout conditions on Highway 26. In Truckee, California, cars skidding, dangerous crashes on Interstate 80. Traffic there stretching to the horizon. What a mess tonight. Let's get right to Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z because, Ginger, we know a lot of people begin their travel this evening. That's exactly right. And by tomorrow, they're all on the roads. And so we need to check in brand new winter storm watches from Texas to Iowa. That's more Thursday night into Friday. You see the pink and orange just smothering the West. Winter storm warnings and advisories. That's happening now through tomorrow. So look at this. It's Boise up to Billings. Salt Lake City is one of those airports I just watch out for, potentially for a Wednesday delay. And then we'll move this to the south and east. And by Thursday itself, the rain erupts from Wisconsin back to Texas. I think Friday morning looks the messiest. Amarillo now could see up to a half inch of ice. Dallas to Oklahoma City, heavy rain and storms on I-35. What a mess. It always seems to happen on Thanksgiving. Ginger, thank you. We turn now to the race for 2016 and Donald Trump doubling down tonight, standing by his claim that he saw thousands cheering the buildings coming down on 9-11. Tonight also making news after saying he saw something else, saying he saw workers that morning jumping from the Twin Towers from his own apartment window. But many asking, with the smoke and the fact that his building is miles away, how could he see people jumping? ABC's Tom Yamas on the campaign trail, and you will hear from many voters tonight who say Trump's claims certainly don't bother them. Tonight, Donald Trump taking his claims of what he saw on 9-11 to a new level. I have a window in my apartment that specifically was aimed at the World Trade Center because of the beauty of the whole downtown Manhattan. And I watched as people jumped. His penthouse in Trump Tower, located in midtown Manhattan, four miles from where the World Trade Center once stood. Yet despite the distance and the smoke billowing around the Twin Towers, Trump says he was able to see people jump. This is Trump's second questionable claim about 9-11 this week. Earlier, he said Muslims in New Jersey celebrated as the towers burned. When the World Trade Center came tumbling down, and I watched in Jersey City, New Jersey, where thousands and thousands of people were cheering. He says he saw it on television, but no video has ever surfaced. Jersey City officials say it never happened, but Trump says others saw it as well. I start getting phone calls in my office by the hundreds that they were there and they saw this take place. Trump's fans who line up for hours sometimes to watch him speak say they don't think he's lying. Do you care at all that he sometimes gets facts wrong or does that not bother you? That doesn't bother me at all. I mean, to air is human. I don't think he's going to try to intentionally uh, tell you wrong. He's good hearted. I think he means well. But tonight, from Hillary Clinton, a much different view, saying the Republican frontrunner traffics in prejudice and paranoia. And David, you heard in our report Donald Trump say he's been fielding hundreds of phone calls from people who also saw thousands of Muslims in New Jersey celebrating on 9-11. Well, we contacted the campaign and asked to speak to some of those callers. They have yet to get back to us. David? Tom Yamas in South Carolina tonight. Thank you, Tom. And we move now to the heated debate over allowing Syrian refugees here in America. 31 states now, barring refugees from settling here. Indiana Governor Mike Pence, the first governor to be sued after diverting a refugee family to another state. 
the ACLU calling it unconstitutional, the governor citing public safety and security concerns over the refugees. There is still much more ahead on World News Tonight. This